John Burroughs, six and three on the year. They've swept their district playoff action against Orchard Farm, Principia. That was a close one, winning nine to seven. And then last week over Cardinal Ritter, 27 to 12. Big Jason Butts checks in. Third down and a short yard. Edwards from the 45, hands off. Cranston, he's got the first down. He's to the 50, the 45, the 40. And he's drugged down at the California 35. Jay Gump nudged him out of bounds, moved the chains. The Bombers, another first and 10. Percival had a good shot at him. Looks like Percival hurt out there a little bit. I noticed the first half uh, he was limping around still. He's uh, favoring one of his legs. It looks like he's not at 100%. Market at the 36-yard line of the Pinos. Well, this is a key here. The Pinos give up some points here. Could break the Camels back this quickly into the third quarter. Bombers break the huddle from the Pino 36. And Edwards gets in behind center. Long snap count. Butts almost jumped the gun. Here's a hand up to Kranz, and he stuck hard. Coming up from the secondary was Blake Cutting to make the tackle. Pick up about two, maybe three. Cutting had to come up from the secondary to make that stop. It'll be second down and seven. And pick up a three yards from the 36 to the 33. Seven to nothing is the score. We are live and direct from Moss Field at Webster Groves, Missouri and suburban St. Louis in the first round of the 2A high school football playoffs. Bombers break the huddle. Double tight end set up. Edwards in behind center, gets the snap, handoff, Lock Miller, and I think Theroff got a hand on him and tripped him up. That was enough to allow Dunaway to come up from the secondary to go ahead and put him the rest of the way down, pick up of a yard, third down and six up coming from the 32. Trevor's picked off a couple running backs like that, stuck his big paw out there and brought him down with one hand, and that gives a chance for the secondary, as you said, Troy, to come up and uh, finish him off. The ushers and the gatekeepers here at Moss Field wear the same attire as the ones at Bush Stadium. Kind of adds a little touch to the proceedings here. Tremendous facility. This is the home of the 4A state champions, the Webster Grove Statesman. That's Statesman, not just one statement. Back to pass is Edwards. He throws. He's going for the end zone, and it is intercepted in the end zone. Touchback, California. They'll get it at their own 20-yard line. Intercepting the ball is Rick Percival. Good coverage by Percival back there with Shane Dunaway, and uh, either one of them had a chance at it. Rick Percival jumped up, grabbed the football, and the California offense coming out on the field. Now they're going to say... They're going to say he was he was in the end zone. Looked like it to me. Looked like he caught it in the end zone. They're going to say that they're going to put the ball at the one-yard line. He sure <laughs> looked like he was in the end zone to me. I don't know. They got that uh, yellow line. Oh, yeah, the, goal line. the infamous orange line yeah. trick again. Not yellow, but orange. Or is right. it orange? I'm colorblind. No. I can't even see the line. I That's my yellow. problem. Yeah, you're right. It's orange. All right. Like my hair, right? <laughs> it's orange the last time I checked. Well, here's a risky situation for California from their own one yard line. A big pile up on a first down carry. So, yeah, the last white line is the five yard line. And so Percival made the INT. But now his team desperately needs to get it out of there. The last orange line we saw was at Crestridge, I think. And Twice in the same year. Confused us all night long. And uh, the orange that they got down tonight, we can't see it from up here. Just barely see an orange. If I line. know I'm supposed to be looking for orange, I guess I can see it. But it kind of blends in with the grass if you're not trying to concentrate on it. Schloop gets in behind center from his own two-yard line. Gets the snap, handoff cutting. And Blake out to about the four-yard line and not much more. A risky situation for the Pinos here. It'll be now third down from their own four. If they can't get a first down, need to pick up a couple of three yards so they'll have room to punt it. And then Dunaway will need to get one heck of a kick away. Pinos break the huddle here in the third quarter from our right to our left. 7-11 left to go in the third quarter. Burroughs leading 7-0 over the Pinnos. Third down and call it about seven from the four. Here's a pitch to Cutting. Turns the corner. He's got the first down. He's across the 15. Out to about the 17-yard line. Move the chains. Blake Cutting a big, big first down. It was Scott Wright that made the tackle. 
Well, they don't have to punt the football. They got the first down. They can breathe now. Yeah, Wright was one of the last people there to get cutting. Cutting turned that corner, and when he gets that uh, head pointed upfield and those feet and the shoulders square, he can really rack off the yards and uh, just got stopped there by Wright. Good blocking by Big Trevor Theroff, the 6'4", 220-pound right offensive tackle, and Steve McGill, the senior right offensive guard. And from the 18, here's a pitch to cutting. He bobbled the pitch, grabbed it, tucked it in, and got out to about the 20. It'll be second down and about seven. They'll mark him at about the 21. A good play just grabbing a hold of the pitch. Shahad Sabet made the tackle. H, or pardon me, A-H-A-D-S-A-B-E-T is how you spell that name. Now, recite that back to me, Jeff. What did I just say? <laughs> A -H -A -D. Don't look. I got to look. I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not the speller you are. Looks like an eye chart. <laughs> he's played good football, though. Yeah, he's a he's a good uh, good defensive player, linebacker. He's a also an offensive threat. All right, let's mark it at the 21. We have a stoppage in play momentarily. The referee is Mike Zur, the umpire Jim Rosen, the linesman John Hinshaw, the judge Bruce Lowenberg. Second and seven. From their own 21, Schluck behind center, double tight end setup, wing to the far side. Here's a handoff to Cutting, right up the gut. And he is out across the 25 to the 26. And the Pinot offensive line doing a good job right now. They went right side again behind Theroff and McGill. Cole Thompson made the tackle. We'll have to wait and see and check out the tight end over there on the right side. They've been rotating Tim Cushion and Greg Job either side, much to the same degree they do with the defensive ends, Job and Glenn Blankenship. Less coming into the ball game now. Malapinos break the huddle. And from the 26-yard line, it's third down and about two. Schlute behind center out of the eye. And here's the snap. Handoff. Cutting. First down. He's out to the 30. Move the chains. It's a California first. Bill Lockmiller made the tackle. Well, for the first time tonight. California moving the chains uh, exclusively by running the ball off the Burroughs Bombers. Yeah, this is the way you like to see the Pintos play football at uh, first half. They had one good drive like this, Troy, and then uh, John Burroughs snuffed it out down around the 30, but now they're moving the ball and looks to be in good shape offensively so far. First and 10 from their own 31. Schlup behind center, double tight end set up, wing to the far side, Dunaway out of the eye. And we're going to have a flag uh, right side of that offensive line. Jump the gun. It might have been the wing Dunaway. Somebody over there jumped the gun. It's going to be against the Pinos. That'll move them five yards back. 5.01 left to go here in the third quarter. It's 7 to nothing. John Burroughs in a game that's been much more competitive than the first round game last year. Played at Riley Field when Burroughs shut out the Pinos and dominated the game 35 to nothing. Again, they didn't have any real big long scoring plays, but they just moved the chains much like they did. Uh, in this ball game in the first half. They just moved the chains 10 yards at a time. Power football. Now it's first and 15. From their own 26, Schlup gets in behind center, out of the eye, double tight end set up, and a handoff to Cutting. No, it's a reverse near side to Dunaway, but the Bombers smell it out. No problem whatsoever as Rob Rogers made the tackle and a loss of yardage. It'll be second down and about 20, depending upon where they mark the ball. Second down and about 17 as they move it back to the 24. Rogers came up from that secondary position and like you said, smelled that out. He held his position there on the right side and Dunaway had no place to go. 4-11 clock ticking third quarter. Pinos break the huddle, working it offensively from our right to our left as you look in on King Zingamo. Schlup gets in behind center, wing to the far side, Dunaway out of the eye. Here's the snap and Schlup drops back to pass on second and long over the middle, short. The intended receiver was Shane Dunaway at the 40-yard line. That will bring up second down at about 18 from the 24-yard line. Andy Wilson put on the pressure there, got to Paul Schloop just before he released the football. And as you said, uh, Dunaway just missed that one. Here's a big third down play. The Pintos need uh, about 20 for the first down here, Troy. And it would be nice if they could get it right here. Wide to the far side is Tim Cushion. Slot formation in the slot is Dunaway. Tied into the near side is Greg Job out of the eye. The tailback is cutting the fullback is safely. Dropping back to pass is Schloop. Over the middle, it's up and may have been partially deflected. As it is, it's incomplete and the Pinos will punt the football away. And at our next offensive series, and 
We'll run down the California offensive starters. Well, that drive stalls. Fortunately, though, they'll have some room to punt it out of there. If they can get a decent kick and good coverage, then John Burroughs will not have good field position. Offensively, the Pinto line not giving Schloop very much time to throw that football. And Paul Schloop's the type of guy that needs to set up and uh, take a little time to catch it, find his receivers. Cranston and Lockmiller standing at their own 45 line drive kick off the toe of Dunaway. And Lockmiller takes it at his own 47 and looking for daylight doesn't go anywhere. A good tackle by R.L. Williams, his second tackle on specialty teams tonight. Long Miller couldn't find the daylight and down he went. So Jim Edwards drops uh, back out onto the field here at Moss Field, Webster Groves. And the Bombers will take it over offensively. He threw an interception the last time the Bombers had the ball. An official's timeout now as Long Miller has an equipment problem. Well, basketball is just around the corner.